the key of death and Hades. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Revelations 1.18 Jesus the Judge is the living one who was dead, but is now alive forevermore. He has the keys of Hades and of death. The book of Revelation is filled with a lot of mysterious items. This is because Revelation covers matters that concern the earth and heaven. Items in heaven carry a lot of spiritual significance. Apostle John reveals details of these artifacts or items to us. John, the writer, is a political prisoner on the island of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. The modern equivalent would be Alcatraz. He's been arrested and exiled for religious reasons. It is Jesus who says this to John, And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. This conversation is essential, as this is the last personal meeting with Jesus recorded in the Bible. By possessing the keys of death, the risen Christ has control and authority over death. Think of giving someone the key to the city. This key is sometimes a large, cartoonish key that fits no lock but symbolizes honor. Those given keys to the city are welcome and honored within that city. Keys are frequently referred to in the Bible as symbols of authority and control. An individual with a master key to a building has the authority to enter any room and open any door in the building. Hell is a horrible territory where powers of evil and terror hold their high court and dread assembly. But hell shudders at the sight of the Lord, and there is a throne more elevated than the throne of evil. Not only does he have the dominion over all sheep and oxen, as well as all birds of the air, fish of the water, and anything else that travels along the course of the sea, but he also has authority over death and Hades. This is because the glorified man has been given this authority. So that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 10 to 11. The preacher S.M. Lockridge noted, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Our Lord Jesus Christ still remains supreme. The word Hades signifies the dwelling place of spirits. Christ has conquered death, and the products for us are eternal. It is Christ's victory over death that underpins the good news of the gospel. Without the resurrection, there is no gospel. Indeed, there is no hope for us at all. 1 Corinthians 15, 17 And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. The people of God have always yearned that the Lord would one day abolish death. Hosea 13.14 Shall I ransom them from the power of Sheol, the place of the dead? Shall I redeem them from death? O death, where are your thorns? O Sheol, where is your sting? Compassion is hidden from my eyes because of their failure to repent. Death was the devil's most potent, terrifying weapon against us. Believers are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Christ has conquered death, and believers stand firm on Jesus' words. It is imperative that we do not forget that the Father is the one who bestowed upon Jesus Christ the right to occupy his exalted position of authority and dignity as a reward for what he has done. Let us worship him, let our hearts, as we ponder these simple but priceless truths, come and spread their treasure at his feet, and let us affrone him as a lord over everything. With Jesus at the centre of everything, we have a sure hope. Adam's sin brought about physical death for all humanity. 
However, Jesus, who was sinless and had never committed any wrongdoing, willingly took upon himself the punishment for the sins of all the people by dying on the cross. In doing so, he fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament and provided a way for people to be reconciled with God and receive eternal life. Hebrews 2, 9-10, New American Standard Bible But we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of his suffering, death crowned with glory and honor, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to perfect the originator of their salvation through suffering. The truth is that people fear one thing, and that thing is death. This is because to the world death is unknown. Some people feel fear when they consider what lies ahead. Will I have to answer for what I've done? What I've not done? Will I burn in hell forever? Or will I reach a state of eternal bliss? And don't be misled, hell is real. After our lives on earth are over, Christians will walk in a victorious march following Christ. This should make us say, let us worship him who hath the keys of hell and death. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. The believer now has a reason to fear not. However, the ungodly must reflect on this reality. Christ hath the keys of death. If you pass away at this moment, you do have not the key of death. O oh man, what would become of thee? O oh woman, what would become of thee? I implore you to take a moment to reflect on your actions and seek God's guidance. Remember that even if you wanted to go to battle with Christ and be his adversary, you would not be able to do so since he is currently the Lord and will continue to be the Lord in the future. I implore you to listen to his gospel. We are told how to be saved. Matthew 28, 19 Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So yield to his gospel, trust in him who died on cavalry and lives to make intercession now. Trust in him to baptize in his name, confess your sins and acknowledge yourself as his disciple.